Hello, VC, uh, and anyone else out there watching. This is uh, my uh, response to Big Star 1000's Gimme 10 1983. Uh, but I'm first, before I get into it, I'm going to show you the first record I ever bought, which is a 1983 record. Um, and I bought this... With, this is the first record I bought with my own money. I think I did have some other records that were given to me before that. And I bought it at the WH Smith's uh, Wood Green Shopping Centre in London. And it is Toya. Love is the law. Yes. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what drew me to this. Beyond the cover, maybe. Um, it's got the song Broken Diamonds on it, which I quite like. The rest of the album, <laughs> not so much really, um, but I thought I'd show that, 1983, the first album I bought, so first record in my collection, Love is the Law by Toya. Okay, so let's get on with the real deal. Um, I'm going to start with three records that were on uh, probably everyone's list, certainly uh, on Big Star 1000s. So I won't say much about these. First one, Swordfish Trombones, Tom Waits, Marvellous Album, tracks like In the Neighbourhood, uh, Swordfish Trombone, Frank's Wild Years. Um, the first of his Berlin cabaret influenced Kurt Vile, Captain Beefheart. A big change from him, especially from the last album he produced in 1980. Heart Attack and Vine, which was a bluesy album. So this was the album that really changed his career, I suppose. Uh, and it is marvellous. Seek it out. If you haven't listened to it. Obviously, if you've got it, don't seek it out, because that would be foolish. Well, unless you want another copy. And I know there are people out there that like more than one copy of things. Uh, second one that uh, Fred showed was uh, Soul Mining by The The. Um, there kind of their debut album of course there was Matt Johnson's album which I think subsequently was Burning Blue Soul which was uh, re renamed as a the, the album later because I have got a copy of it on tape on on 4AD uh, anyway get yeah, smashing album pop sort of he's got a real I, I mean I'm a big fan of Matt Johnson and the the and he's got a kind of a very Brechtian way of writing you know, it's up front. There's no subtext. The subtext is in your face. And there's probably something quite... Um, well, it's, it's it works for him. I think for other people it might not work. Anyway, Soul Mining. Um, great album. Okay, the third one that was shown. Uh, R.E.M. Murmur. I was a huge R.E.M. fan. Um, of course, I didn't really get into them until, I suppose, Green 89 was the first album of theirs I really became aware of. Um, and um, it was great when you find an artist or a band that you've got a back catalogue that you can go through. Isn't it great when, when that happens? So, yeah, I spent, um, you know, around that time, 1990, sort of buying up all the old albums and their debut album, Murmur, is is great. Um, yeah. At the start of a, a purple patch of albums that just were, I think, unsurpassed in sort of indie, uh, indie rock. So, R.E.M. Murmur. Okay, so, first of all, I've got a couple of things to say. Um, I, I've chosen two albums which are actually, technically speaking mini albums they're not eps they are classed as mini albums and i think as such were in the album charts so oh well i don't care i'm, I'm putting them in here anyway um uh, the first one of these is uh the debut album from billy bragg life's a riot uh with spy versus spy um just brilliant um punk folk uh just him and a guitar 
and incredible songwriting. Um, probably less political, overtly political than some of his later albums and stuff. But songs like, I mean, it's got a New England on it, which, of course, um, Kirsten McCall recorded and had a hit with. Man in the Iron Mask, um, The Milkman of Human Kindness. Brilliant, brilliant album. Um, I think the original, uh, this is on two sides, but I think the original was actually only on one side and the other side was blank. I know the tape was uh, that was released had... Um, the track's only on one side. And on the other side it said, bootleg the brag. So it was like saying, go, go and um, record him live or something and put it on the other side of the record. Anyway, Billy Bragg, Life's a Riot. But, um, Life's a Riot with Spy vs. Spy. Marvellous stuff. Uh, someone I haven't seen yet, I don't think, or have I, on any of these Gimme Tens. Um, and um, that's Randy Newman. Um, love Randy Newman. Probably his seventies stuff um, is is my fa more favourite, the favourite stuff of his. But this one, um, Trouble in Paradise, is um, a return to form after a couple of of poorer albums he released in the uh, in the the, the late seventies, early eighties. And this is an angry, bitter. Um, spiteful almost album looking at the state of America um, from the track I Love LA which on the face of it sounds like a, a, a love song to the to the city but really isn't um, Christmas in Cape Town somebody talking about um, uh, apartheid and how they still need it um, an old Afrikaan um, Afrikaan? Afrikaner anyway um, there's a duet with um, Paul Simon on the blues um, My Life is Good brilliant so yeah and it all ends with a song called Song for the Dead which is the um, a song about uh, an American GI burying his comrades but whilst he's doing it pointing out what what they've died for and of course when you read when you listen to the rest of the album you question what have they died for so that everyone can take cocaine drink martini in florida in miami and uh yeah anyway great album uh this is an album i i came across and really fell in love with this is t-bone burnett proof through the night now he would would later become better known uh, as a producer um, for all kinds of people like uh, um, uh, Elvis Costello, notably. Um, he produced the uh, Oh Brother Where Art Thou soundtrack and other soundtracks like that. Um, he had a real rootsy sense to him. This album um, is a kind of a mix of jangle kind of pop with a bit of rootsy rock, uh, Americana inflections throughout it. Again, another sort of bitter album. Um, uh, look, he, but but, but what, what, much like um, Randy Newman, he writes in characters and we have these kind of almost despicable characters. And on here there's a great song called Hefner and Disney, which you haven't heard, you should check out. So that's uh, T-Bone Burnett. Speaking of Elvis Costello, here we have him. Elvis Costello pumps the clock. Um... Uh, well, this is um, another great album uh, by Elvis and the Attractions. Probably is worth getting for shipbuilding. One of the greatest um, anti-war songs written, certainly during this era. Uh, and I have to say, and I know this is heresy... But I actually prefer Elvis's version um, to um, Robert Wyatt's version. I do like Robert Wyatt's version, but I, I do prefer Elvis's. Um, it's got pills and soap on it. Uh, every day I write the book. Marvellous album. Couple more left. Couple more? Yes. Three more. Uh, King Sunny A Day and his African Beats. 
This is uh, Syn Synchro System, and probably not as good as his, as his um, previous album, but um, this is, I think somebody showed this, I can't remember who it was, forgive me, um, or not, didn't show this, but they showed a King Sunny A Day album, and yeah, he was being positioned as the new kind of Bob Marley, a, a world music superstar. Never really happened. But it's a great, um, more, more electronic synthesizers and stuff on this. But it's a Nigerian Juju, um, well at least Juju from Nigeria. Um, and um, yeah, I, I just came across this once and just picked it up because I was picking up African music and um, I was very, very impressed with it. There's a film by Robert Altman called O.C. and Stiggs which is the strangest 80s film. Part of that sort of... It's like um, Robert Altman doing a, a Pretty in Pink or something like that, sort of high school comedy kind of thing. And it is a very bizarre film, and I really like it. And it's got the two characters, O.C. and Stiggs, um, booking King Sunny a Day and his African beats for the um, end-of-term prom um, so they get they get them to fly in and uh, and pl play the prom. That's really funny. So if you haven't seen O.C. and Stiggs. It's a terrible film, but absolutely brilliant at the same time. So King Sunny a Day, and another. It's another one of those albums where I love all the I love all the characters, the band on the cover. They're brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Uh, okay, penultimate one, Fun Boy Three, Waiting, their second uh, and last album. Uh, I prefer this to their their first album. This I think is um, a perfect kind of pop album with it's got dark sort of undertones to it, um, and um, it probably most most famous family our lips are sealed on it. I want to get, I got into an argument with someone on the VC on 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 um, on Facebook. With with not accepting that 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 this version of our lips are seals is a cover version, because the Go Go's version was first, but Terry Hall co-wrote it. So how can you do a cover version of the song you co-wrote? Anyway, this is produced by David Byrne. Uh, I do pr much prefer Our Lips Are Sealed by Funboy Three to the Go Go's. It's got a dark sort of apocalyptic feel to it. And if you listen to the the seven inch, there's an Urdu version on the B side, and that's even better. Um, yeah, all kinds of different flavours on this. Less of the scar, less of the two-tone, which is probably why this was the last album they did and, and they, they separated. Um, but yeah, I really like that, Funboy 3. Okay, last one, and this, again, is technically speaking a mini-album. But what are you going to do about it, huh? What are you going to do about it? Um, this is Los Lobos, uh, and A Time to Dance. They're first kind of major label um, release um, and it, it showcases exactly what they would kind of do really for their career. It, we have a cover version of, is it Richie Valens, Come On Let's Go and of course they would go on to, to do the soundtrack to um, La Bamba, the story of Richie Valens. Um, so you've got that on it but you've also got the rootsy rock element that they would also do uh, and the uh, Mexican Spanish uh, sounds which I just adore um, so yeah so I know it's not a fully fledged album the next one was but I think this is a great album uh, so there you go so Los Lobos there we go so that's my Gimme 10 1983 thank you very much for obliging me bye bye